This is uh, a meeting of the Darien 2020 Bicentennial Committee. Um, it's Wednesday, March 10th, 2021 at 11 o'clock. So welcome everybody. Thank you for hanging in with us for over two years now of having these meetings. I really appreciate, uh, appreciate it. Um, just some quick introductions. We've got um, two new people who are uh, new to uh, these meetings. Susan Schultz is on. And she's uh, the editor of the Darien Times. And I just want to thank the Darien Times specifically for all the support they've given us uh, throughout the uh, last year and also into this year, especially for three weeks in a row, they published uh, news and the links about how to submit um, recollections to the Darien Time capsule. So that was really fantastic. Um, so thank you, uh, Susan and the Darien Times. Thank you, Susan, I agree. Second that. Absolutely. You've been really supportive throughout all of last year and into this year. And we've also got Shannon Silsby, and she's the program, she'll be the program manager for the Darien Heritage Trail. So that's still moving forward. Very excited. <clears throat> she's uh, going to be a, a super, super asset to that uh, project. So we'll talk about that a little bit uh, towards the end of the meeting. Um, so that's all the introductions. Um, the various subcommittees have been virtually meeting, uh, especially the time capsule and uh, Heritage Day. Um, so we have been, been meeting. So uh, we do have a quorum now. Cheryl is also on the phone. Hi, Hi Cheryl. So everybody... Cheryl, you're, are you, can you see everybody who's on uh, on this meeting or should I announce everybody? No, nope, I can. All set. Okay. Thanks. Okay, good. So we do have a quorum. Um, I hope everybody's read the minutes. Is everybody okay? Is there a motion to, is everybody, has everybody read the minutes? So does anybody need some time to read them? Mm -hmm. No, is there a motion to approve the minutes? Um, to approve the minutes? I'll second. Is there a second? Okay. I'll second. All those in favor of approving the minutes of February 10th, 2021, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? Uh, Susan, yes, yeah, Susan. I was there. I usually have yes. not there. Shannon Sorry. as well. Yeah, uh, Shannon, you have to be a committee member to vote on the minutes. So. Oh, good. Thanks. No problem. <laughs> but Susan's abstaining, but we still have, uh, obviously, it's... I read them and I approve of them, but I just have to abstain. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, just uh, a point of rules. Uh, committee members have to uh, vote on the minutes. They're the only ones who can vote on the minutes if you're an official committee member. However, the public and everybody is invited if they have comments on the minutes, they think some, something is missing or something should have been added or there's a conflict or something, we welcome everybody's comments. Um, so let's move to the first event. Um, Jamie has some exciting news uh, about the Weed Beach birthday bash. But before she does that, I just want to thank the Parks and Rec Department and specifically Jamie for putting a little advertisement for the Bicentennial in their spring and summer catalog. So thank you much, Parks and Rec and Jamie. So Jamie, how about uh, what's going to happen this year? All right, so we are very excited to um, officially announce um, we have met with the first selectman, the chief of police, and the director of the health department, and they have given us the thumbs up to move forward with um, the Wee Beach Fest just in a little different um, concept than we've done in the past. Um, this year we will be hosting Wee Beach Festive Nights, and um, we'll have at least three is what we're looking towards. Um, uh, evenings selected and it'll be um, a little shorter a little later in the day and we'll still have um, essentially it's uh, dinner and live music on the beach is the concept um, it'll be um, reservation required so we can control um, the crowds and it will be um, I, don't, I don't know like pricing and things like that but there would be an option for dinner and then an option without dinner so it's still you know, um, welcomes everyone, and we would just have to follow whatever the CT gui state guidelines are in regards to attendance numbers. When that time uh, comes along, 
um, hopefully we'll have a better idea the closer we get as to how many people we can safely facilitate. Um, we will have tables and chairs as well as kind of like more of a picnic blanket areas that you have the option for what you want to reserve. And um, the beach will be closed so um, for the event, so we'll be able to truly regulate um, the, the crowds and everything to make sure that it's safe. Um, we are going to have some tables, so we'll be able to do that for um, the sponsor, the Bicentennial sponsors. And um, for the specific to the Bicentennial, we are going to our first festive night. We'll kick off on June 4th. So it'll be the Friday. It's one day prior than we had initially planned, but um, Saturday would then be the rain date for the Friday night. And um, we would we kick off that day, that will be our bicentennial celebration. So that one will be specific to the bicentennial. It'll be themed bicentennial. We're thinking um, we've only chatted about this once on Monday, so bear with us. But um, we're thinking we bring the giant cake, we bring the whale boat. Um, I think we will still be able to do um, the birthday cake decorating with the kids. I do need to confirm that with our uh, chef Lisa, who's going to be handling that, but I'm confident that she'll be able to do it. She's been hosting our cooking classes through COVID, so she's well versed in how to do individual stations and make sure that we can do it safely. Um, we don't want to lose the um, fun, family friendly atmosphere that we've had in the past, so we would look to still do something um, prior to like the dinner and music starting that night, um, do some sort of games and things like that during that um, time period when people would be filtering in any way. So I don't know exactly what that's gonna look like, but we are going to make sure we still have like the Kids Cove fun family entertainment aspect as well. So um, once we get some more plans set in place, I'll be able to report a little bit better on that. And um, I'm also gonna talk to the sponsor we've had in the past, she's also um, on this committee. So we're going to kind of talk through what they would um, be comfortable supporting as well. So we'll get back. Um, we'll be able to report back soon um, on the Kids Cove aspect. But that's kind of the concept that we're looking at um, for the beach. And um, I think I did. I cover everything else. Yeah, so I think it's three it. different nights. Yes, so the Bicentennial event will be uh, our first kickoff right. event, and that'll be Friday, June 4th, with June 5th as the rain date. And then um, we would look to, um, we'll host two more. We might even, most likely, we'll do one at Pear Tree, and then at least one more at Weed Beach, but I don't have those dates to announce right now. We, we have some we're thinking, but they're not set in stone. So they're not consecutive? No, they will not be consecutive. Can I say okay. I, I love this idea? We have to close the beach. We didn't want to do them consecutively. Yeah. Right. I, I think that this is a great uh, happy medium, like if, uh, between a, a virtual event, but also keeping people safe and, and just making sure uh, <clears throat> that we know how many people are going to be there. And to have the inaugural kickoff event be the Bicentennial Bash, I think is really special. That's great. I really so, I love it. We're really excited about it. I mean, I almost, we're kind of thinking this could almost mold into something uh, that's a better structure for us to do in the future. Um, obviously we'll go bigger and, and things like that in the future, but um, it's, this could be a really fun concept of a way to like conclude the events moving forward. So um, yeah, we're very excited and I'm excited that the Bicentennial is on board to still partner with us. So hopefully this birthday party is gonna happen. <laughs> So so we're, we're always going to follow whatever um, the Weed Beach or the Parks and Rec decided to do for the Weed Beach Festival. I mean, we have to follow um, their uh, their event. So I don't think we have to vote on this. But does anybody have any? I think it's a wonderful, wonderful idea. Um, there'll be a band there, like you say. It'll be from I think late afternoon to early evening. Is that mm -hmm. we don't have, we don't have the times, but it'll mm -hmm. be late afternoon to early evening. So it'll be light out. Uh, mm -hmm. Does anybody have any objections? I don't think we have to vote, uh, but does anybody have any objections to this or any comments they want to say? I guess I just wanted to mention oh. too, um, we would have it open only to residents to register, which um, is another positive for the Bicentennial. That was a request from um, the meeting we had 
um, for to have it for residents only because of COVID. But honestly, I think for the bicentennial, that's perfect. So people are all going to be residents there to celebrate um, the town. So it should work out really well. Uh, yeah. Anybody else? Have, I think it's a wonderful idea. You know, we'll have okay, hopefully cake decorating, pictures by the whale boat. We'll have the birthday cake. There'll be a shout out to the sponsor. The band is there, so they'll do a shout out to the sponsors. I guess they'll sing. Well, everybody will sing happy birthday, maybe. So, I think it's wonderful. Uh, anybody have any comments? Good. Okay. Uh, so then, moving on. Uh, thank you, Jamie and Parks and Rec. It's really wonderful. Um, the next one is anniversary day, so we're working on that. It's going to be on June twelfth at Swanson Cemetery. Um, we'll have a fife and drum prior to the event. Then at the beginning of the event, we're going to ask the uh, faith community uh, to all the faith organizations in town to have a ringing of the bells at six o'clock. This is something they did 50 years ago as well. Uh, speech by Jamie Stevenson. Uh, I contacted the Daughters of the American Revolution. Um, hopefully they're going to be doing like a ribbon cutting with laying a plaque on the grave of our founder, Th Thaddeus Spell. Uh, the Boy Scouts have tentatively accepted. Um, they'll be uh, presenting the colors. Um, and then that's about it. It'll be a short kind of a solemn ceremony from six o'clock, June 12th, which is a Saturday to seven o'clock. Um, any questions about anniversary day? And I could use some volunteers for this. It's really just setting up and publicizing and things like that about the event. It's not a big event. It's not a big time commitment, but I could use some volunteers for that. Um, the next one is any comments or uh, concerns or anything about anniversary day? Al, just one quick question. Is this going to be rain or shine? It is rain or shine because June 12th is our... Um, it's our, when we officially became an independent town. So it is June 12th. We do have a tent there. Um, so if it does rain, uh, yeah. people will be able to be in the tent. We're not expecting a big crowd. And with COVID, we'll have it no matter what the regulations of COVID is. If COVID, the regulations say you have to have 25 or less people, then we'll make reservations and they'll just be under the tent or 50 or less. But Things seem to be uh, getting a little, little more flexible with the regulations, and hopefully by June, it'll be even more flexible. So rain or shine, June 12th, 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Al, Al yeah. one thought from my perspective, it's Shannon. If we're inviting the Boy Scouts, should we reach out to the Girl Scouts as well? We can reach out to the Girl Scouts. Uh, we invited the Boy Scouts just because they do the presentation of the flag, you know, they uh, and they say, say the Pledge of Allegiance. They do it at the veteran sign ceremonies, but yeah, we should reach out to yep. the Girl Scouts. As well. If you need a contact, let me know. Okay, uh, because we do need some volunteers. You know, they could be ushers yep. or have them or participate. Help with, or help with the, the colors as well. Setting so, so help with the colors, whatever. Yeah, passing out programs, yeah, definitely. Let me put also, that down. in terms of the sponsors, um, we're going to probably likely be uh, inviting, obviously, the uh, special invitation to our sponsors uh, for both events. And we're also getting a uh, together a big banner that will name all the sponsors, uh, much the same way it is in the Parks and Rec uh, ad, to be held, um, hung behind the podium, right, Al? Is that what we were talking correct. about? Yeah, correct, All right. And it'll be on the whale boat. It'll be, on, you know, the banner will be on all our, uh, at Heritage Day, it'll be displayed at the Museum of Darien. Laurie? I have a question. I, I just want to ask who who's creating that, who's designing it, who is it coming, is that our... I just want to double check it before it goes to manufacturing. <laughs> Absolutely. So we'll pass it through uh, you, Lori, definitely. But All Jamie right. uh, is going to be designing it. We're going to we'll do a, a preliminary thing. We'll pass it through you and Sarah and everything. And then okay. um, uh, in Norwalk, our printer will probably do the the banner. Total printing. Yeah. Yeah. Total printing, right? Yeah, they'll probably okay. do the banner. Um, right. So moving on to Heritage Day, um, 
last meeting it was uh, we voted to postpone it to October 23rd and 24th, which I think is great. Um, actually, Maggie and me and Representative uh, and Mia uh, and a, rep a minister from the interim minister from the um, First Congregational Church are going to work walk the area and seeing what we have to block off between the Girl Scouts, the Museum of Darien, and um, the First Congregational Church. We've talked to the Girl Scouts about this event as well. What Girl Scouts? Will... Wait, what? Girl Scouts? I'm Scout? sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, not the Girl Scouts, the YWCA. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, the YWCA. So they're all right next to one another. They're all friendly neighbors. Um, so we have to talk, uh, see what if we're going to close off those roads, uh, where we're going to place, where we're going to do a reenactment of the kidnapping of Mather, of Pastor Mather at the First Congregational Church. They're all involved. They're very excited about it. And then we'll be moving on to, uh, in the afternoon, we're moving to the Mather Homestead. Um, and Mia, you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, we're still trying to figure out parking logistics. That's our biggest uh, difficulty, I guess. So um, Heather, the director of Mather, is speaking with PNZ, and we're just trying to figure out if we need a shuttle to get people from um, the Darien Museum up to there, or um, if we're going to have the parking. I'm, I'm hoping that we have the parking. Um, you know, make it a one-time special day where the residents hopefully allow us to park on the street. Um, we do have a lot of availability uh, on our property, but we also are checking. I think tomorrow we have a walkthrough to make sure that, right. you know, we have the space for the actual skirmish where the 5th Regiment comes up and does this great display for everybody. Um, so we'll figure that out tomorrow, I think, a little bit better. Um, the 5th Regiment's also spending the, the evening before Heritage Day uh, in as a campsite, as they did back in the day on the property, and we're going to have a little um, get-together, hopefully, with all of you uh, the night before. And um, I don't know. There's nothing. What else What else do I have to yeah. say? Yeah, that's about it. Um... Thanks. Uh, yeah, they're reenacting the skirmish. First, they're going to be reenacting the kidnapping at the Museum of Darien, the First Congregational Church. After mm -hmm. that, in the afternoon, they'll be moving up to um, another homestead to reenact the skirmish that took place there. Hopefully, we'll have a cannon. I'm very excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> and we contacted with the police and talked to them about firing a cannon, probably some muskets and everything that the reenactors from the 5th Connecticut Regiment will be uh, firing. Maggie? Uh, oh, sorry, I just, Lauren. Want to say, um, just a, a quick shout out to the Congregational Church. I mean, we could, they, they've been wonderful. And um, just the whole thought of doing the whole uh, um, raid on the Congregational Church is, is just going to be um, wonderful. And um, to have them on board and participating in such a great way is, has been a huge help. And uh, we're lucky to have them. So. Okay, Lori. I, I'm, I'm, I see Susan's on the call, Susan Schultz. I mean, th this is really cool. And I want to make sure that everybody finds out about this. So, I, I mean, I would hope that obviously it would be in the Darien Times, but we still have a school rep because I want to make sure that everybody, all the teachers know about this. Cause I would think if I was a teacher, I would definitely, you know, make sure my kids knew that these two in that reenactments were happening. Cause it's just a, yeah, actually, we very out. and we do have. I mean, there's probably a part of it with the Darien Museum too. But we do have. We will be having like a, um, a essay contest, and the head of the um, high school. We've been talking to him for you know since this whole thing started, and um, they're definitely going to be involved with in that aspect of it. And I think also we're including students, possibly the Boy Scouts or and Girl Scouts. Um, but definitely the schools, as far as um, being there that day, you know, they'll definitely um, get a word from the I mean teachers. The, the teacher, the, yeah, the, the teachers at the elementary school level and the middle school level to build it into their curriculum and or just, you know, mention it or have it be somehow. I, I don't have anybody in the schools anymore, so I don't really know the best communication. Can I 
Can I make a suggestion? I really think once we get uh, the details a little bit more uh, hammered out, that mm -hmm. we should suggest a meeting with Keith Keeler and uh, social studies teachers, history teachers, a Zoom meeting, just to present to them what our ideas are and what is going to be happening that day and uh, maybe before the school year ends, that would be something we could That's get That's a great idea. Great idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, that would be good with representatives of, you know, each school or at least Keith Keeler and some other people from the history department. Um, you know, Bruce Clark is a history teacher in the high school, and we meet every two or three weeks to discuss the time capsule. So I can bring this up with him. Oh, also. he's great. He's great. Yeah, he's very, very good. Yeah. And uh, they're going to be presenting. Actually, they did a video. That they're sending to the schools <laughs> because all the schools will be um offering up something to be put in the time capsule so every elementary school and every grade level every elementary school will be offering something and every grade level of the middle schools and the high schools will be offering something um and he's actually got some things already from uh some of the different schools so that's really good but in any event um, he's been communicating with them, and they have a video that they show about the time capsule, but we can ask him also to mention uh, what's coming up for Heritage Day. So, Lori, sorry. <laughs> no, I have to do the light in my office goes off oh. if I don't move. <laughs> oh, I I was... <laughs> so I have to do the wave or something every, like, 10 minutes. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm taking so care of the else? environment. <laughs> yeah. Anything else for Heritage Day? Any questions or? Well, I'm assuming too that a... someone there get can, is able to get it in the. Um, they have those weekly newsletters at the schools, don't they? So, uh, I assume they do. I mean, yeah, the message boards, Lori. The message boards are managed individually by each school. Yeah. Okay, but. I think as we get closer to the event, I mean, this is going to be in October, so anything we yeah. put out there before the summer vacation is going to be forgotten I forgotten guess. the kids, Agreed, will, right. the kids like me you know forget about it until uh the beginning of the next year so i think i i, I submit we should ramp it up then i submit um events to those um new newsletters for each school so i could give whoever's going to send something out for heritage day i can give you like the breakdown it's got the the who to send it to and um like the deadlines for each school and things like that so i could give that to whoever's going to submit to the schools. OK, good. We can and, and those will change. Those could change. People could change in August. The main address won't, but people will change, Jamie, um, yeah. by then. People? Uh, or at the schools. The, the, fall the, group, the people that manage them. It changes every August. Sometimes oh, no, people continue, like, but like a generic, um, you know, like an it email. Is. Yeah, that won't change. But the, the, often it's to that and a person. So I'm just my oh, gotcha. flagging for you that that could change, and I can help you find those if you need. Thank you. Can I ask a quick question? To... Sure. Sorry, um, Maggie. I just noted too. Are the history kids of Darien involved in this? Because that would be a really good outreach to the schools. That group yeah. of kids that work at the center. Right. Sarah Kina is a member of uh, the 2020 committee, and she's our liaison with uh, the History Kids of Darien. And um, so she it would definitely be working with uh, with those volunteers. And um, and she's just not on today, but she's definitely. Oh, in cool. Time. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Sarah is a committee member. She runs the education subcommittee for the 2020 Bicentennial Committee. <clears throat> but also. Uh, yeah, her, uh, those uh, kids have been involved in the opening ceremony, uh, big time. Uh, they've been involved in some of the stuff about the whale boat um, and other events that the Museum of Darien is on. And they're going to be involved in Anniversary Day and Heritage Day and all these events. Definitely. Additionally, uh, Dominic Siebel, who's in, uh, in the high school, He's also involved with Sarah, and he's really ramping up as far as the students are concerned, this time capsule project. So he's a big part of that. So all those people are definitely involved. Yeah. OK, we do have a third mailing that we have to start uh, working on. And the third mailing is uh, to every, it's an EDDM. 
it'll go to every household in Darien, and it'll have all these um, all these e events as well. Sarah's still selling merchandise, so if you want any ornaments or hats or T-shirts, or she actually has stickers now, they're selling them at Barrett's. Um, but also, you can get it at um, email Darian twenty twenty m e r c h at gmail.com so darian2020 m-e-r-c-h like merchandise at gmail.com and anybody volunteer or i know some people have said they were interested um so she may have been reserving some of these products for some people please uh give her a call or drop her an email and and pick it up uh, uh so that's it so now moving on to the time capsule and uh, actually at all these events we'll be selling uh, merchandise too but uh, not the on, time capsule. I'm sorry. Not on anniversary day. So. Yeah, I'm sorry. Not on anniversary day, right? That because that's a little more uh, solemn. Uh, as far as the time capsule, that's going really well. Um, the students and Bruce Clark uh, did uh, put together this uh, good presentation PowerPoint. I think I showed it to the committee last time. So they're showing that to uh, all the schools, and they're in contact with the schools. They've already got some submissions. Um, as far as the book is concerned, we're asking everybody, any resident of Darien or past resident of Darien, to submit, you know, just their recollections of, of last year or just their recollections of living in Darien in general. We haven't had too many of those. Um, we've got about a couple of dozen, maybe, um, if that. The library is really, the Darien library is really heading this up. You can submit a paper copy to the Darien Library, just drop it off there. Uh, Caroline Lopez is in charge of that. Um, or you can go to our website. Uh, if you go to our the website, the town website, www.dariencct.gov, go all the way to the bottom. There's a picture of the Bicentennial logo. Click on that. You'll see all the links for the merchandise. You'll see the links to submit something for the um, book for the uh, time capsule. You'll see a thank you to the sponsors. Um, also, you'll see uh, our three social media sites. Uh, you'll see all the committee members' names in there. So, uh, thank you to all of them, all of you. Um, so that's good. So please submit. Um, please submit your recollections. And hopefully we will all be around 50 years. I don't know if I will. I'm probably the oldest person here. But I plan to be here 50 years from now. So there's no excuse. Everybody else should. Everybody else should. <laughs> um, that's it. So Heritage Trail, welcome, Shannon. Um, you're a great asset. Um, so she's going to be working the Heritage Trail. She's the program manager for that. Uh, we put out on LinkedIn um, a submission for everybody and Sharon. Shannon really had a spectacular resume, and she's a longtime Darien resident. And I was also really impressed talking with her about um, just the his, historical background, all the history that she knew um, in general, but specifically about the eight sites that we're going to do. So, welcome, Shannon. I don't know if you have anything to say or. Thank you, Al. Um, um, no, what? thrilled to be here. Um, love history. Clearly, it's it's a guide for our our past, our present, and our future. Um, like you, Lori, so excited. would love to see kids just, you know, at the skirmishes and really just eating up all the great material that is our history um, so that they can carry it for us. So excited to work with you to bring the Heritage Trail to life. Good. So moving on to general discussions, Libby, uh, nothing really. I know we paid $150 to Jamie for doing the new graphics, but anything new on finances? Uh, nope. It's been pretty quiet on my end. No, nothing coming in, nothing going out. So. Okay. Pretty, pretty safe. Good. Um, can I, I, on some, can I mention on, Maggie. I, sure. I, I think it's appropriate to mention this. Okay. But um, the, at the library, Ken Reese, who wrote uh, Darien 1820, is also the curator of uh, the current exhibition that's up at the Museum of Darien that is all about life in Darien as it was in 1820. Um, he's going to be having a Q&A at the library. So if you're interested in learning more about the town and what life was really like here in 1820, uh, the sign up is through the library. It's co-sponsored with um, the Museum of Darien at the library on April 15th at seven o'clock. Um, we're also doing a, 
a book club on the uh, book Darien 1820. There's only a couple more spots, but anyone who's interested is welcome to join up. And the book is for sale actually at Barrett Bookstore as well. So, shameless plug, sorry, right. but it's history. No, so. that's, well, absolutely. They're important. Um, so the magazine Darien Neighbors, Claire is talking with uh, the editors there, and I think that uh, will be featured in their June edition of Darien Neighbors. So um, that's exciting. Um, I think that's about it. This is a general discussion open to anybody have anything to say, Laurie? Yeah, I was just going to um, announce, I guess, that um, I'm going to work with Cheryl and um, in regards to the sponsors, make sure that they have an update of the events that are planned now that they've been reimagined slightly and the new dates, and also to send them um, a communication, sort of an updated community communication plan. Um, Jamie, do you have extras of the brochures in case the sponsors didn't get them? The, um, you know, the Parks and Rec brochures, if I could swing by and pick up a dozen and Cheryl and I can talk about getting that to them just so that they can see their advertising dollars in action yes, um, and if absolutely. we know when the, when the next townwide mailing's going out I mean in a way they got gypped because everything got canceled but in a way they have two years worth of advertising and they're going to get some more things and some different things and so you know I just want to update them on what <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and we even, to my world. we even have some new members too that might be interested in a sponsoring and i just want to let you know too that just to add that obviously the chamber will promote all of the events um to all of our members and our um our residents Great. Yeah. Okay, so if we have new members do you mean new mem new sponsors have they paid up to be new sponsors well, we have new chamber members, so I think it's possible that we could go out potentially and ask if additional people want to become sponsors. So not just okay, the ones so we, in 2020. Okay, well, let's. Uh, we, I guess our first deadline, whenever we start to, we you know, we already sent out the, obviously the Parks and Rec book already went out. Whatever the next mailing is, we'd want to make sure we had uh, lead time for the, creation of whether it's the the door to door the, the what was it called e e m s e e e d m yeah um e -D -D -M. you know so i guess cheryl you and i can talk offline on who they are and we can you know approach them and decide if we want to add them to our sponsor list and then they need to pay up and then if they pay up and just their logo they can be on banners and marketing material going forward right that would be great yeah um, just but, you know, we need a, a rough time um, for for something like that I, uh, to get the uh, the mailing together and uh, to lay it lay it out, and the whole process takes a while. So I would think we would want to get it out uh, well before, like a couple weeks before, or like maybe mid May. Um, so I'm thinking like mid April might be the deadline for yeah, for that. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Well, like I said, Cheryl and I can work offline. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, Jamie. I just wanted yeah, to, to let you know two things. One, um, we did discuss um, making sure that sponsors could do tables at the Bicentennial Bash. Or, um, so that's definitely not going to be a problem. So we, we would welcome them. Um, you know, we would just set them up socially distant and have like hand sanitizer at the table. So make sure that they're safe. But um, people would most likely will still be wearing masks at that time. <laughs> So um, we can definitely do that safely and easily. Um, and then also um, when we open up for the registration to sell spots, um, we would offer that to Bicentennial Committee and the sponsors like the day prior to give them first dibs at those spots because if it's anything like the things that we have attempted to host during COVID, we sell out in like two hours everything that we've done. So I anticipate this being the same. So we would give sponsors and the committee members first dibs at getting those spots. Thank you, that's great. Okay, I think, uh, I think that's about it. Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, anybody, there's an open discussion. Anybody have anything else to add? 
Okay, thank you, everybody. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Oh, Shannon, did you have something? Oh, just saying goodbye when we're ready. <laughs> okay, okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? I, I move to adjourn. So move. Second. And a second. Good to see you, Bye Susan. All. Thank you. Bye, Bye all. Bye all. Bye. 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 Thank you, Al. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Okay. Bye. Bye. I think it's unanimously passed. Thank you.